Hello YouTube. Well, it is believed that Chernobyl, which has long turned into an exclusion zone, is no longer dangerous unless errant Russian missiles hit it, you know, the nuclear reactor during the current war, of course. The level of the radioactive threat of the facility has really decreased over the years, but there is still a place there, the approach to which is, is still very deadly. The source of the threat, let me explain to you. On December 8, 1989, there was a publication in the newspaper Pravda. What are people doing in the sarcophagus, which was supplemented with photographs? It was there that readers first observed a picture of giant radioactive stalactite formed by a frozen lava that resembled an elephant's leg. Subsequently, photos of the elephant's foot, black and white and color ones, taken with different magnification and different illumination, were dispersed all over the world. The discovery of this strange object dates back to the late uh, autumn of 1986. After several months of work, the team of liquidators of the Chernobyl disaster finally managed to get into the underground corridor of the emergency fourth reactor. Inside the so-called bubbler pool, where a narrow passage led to, they found solidified lava flowing out of the core. The radioactive fallout, later uh, called elephant's food, had a gray color with metallic highlights and vitreous inclusions on the sides. Experts immediately assumed that there was lead in the composition of this mass which was dropped from helicopters to cool the reactor zone due to heat consumption during the melting of this metal. The preliminary estimate of the weight of the object is 11 tons. Radiation sensors literally streamed that it was impossible to approach that uh, place. As one of the eyewitnesses, research engineer Georgi Popkov recalled that search in, uh, that searchers found a child's horse on wheels somewhere, tied a measuring sensor to it and pushed it towards the elephant's leg. Returning the wheeled vehicle back, they gasped. The device showed 14.5 thousand x-rays per hour. The radiation level exceeded the lethal dose for a person by 20 times. The radiation, uh, the radiation level was measured, but how to take samples from the most dangerous object? So experts have built a system from a self-propelled trolley and an electric drill mounted on top. The structure drove up to the stalactite, but it was not possible to drill a hole in it. The material turned out to be too hard. One after another attempts failed. In the end, one of the uh, military people risking his own life quickly ran up to the object and began to hit it, uh, to hit the hardened mass with an axe. He still managed to break off a small piece of material, which was enough for analysis. The desperate officer was immediately evacuated by helicopter to the hospital. Nothing is known further about his fate. The results of the study of the radioactive substance show that there were no traces of lead in it, but silicon dioxide, uranium, zirconium, titanium, magnesium, graphite, and silicate glass were contained in excess. That is, in fact, the entire set of radionuclides of nuclear fuel born in the infernal kitchen of the Chernobyl accident. The vitreous mass was simply nicknamed lava. The super dense substance practically impervious to drilling could only be damaged by shots from a Kalashnikov assault rifle and armor piercing shells. By the mid 1990s, the outer layers of the elephant's foot began to turn into dust and the mass began to crack. The intensity of this radiation noticeably decreased and specialists or experts began to, to approach it more often, of course in protective suits. In 1996 the facility was even visited by the deputy director of the new confinement project, Artur Karneyev. We're talking about an enterprise that operates a sarcophagus over the fourth reactor. 
Subsequently, experts found that the mass of the future elephant's foot before taking its current position made a path of more than two meters through the pipes and cracks. There were fears that radioactive substances could penetrate deeper into the ground and come in contact with groundwater, endangering the lives of people who use this water. However, in 2016, no advances of the mass into the depths were recorded. The only thing is the ongoing nuclear decay, which makes the elephant's food several degrees warmer than the environment. Nevertheless, even such radiation is still dangerous for a person in the vicinity of the object. Radiation is able to overcome any protective mechanisms of our body and modify connections that hold DNA together and therefore lead to various kinds of breakdowns at the cellular level. Uh, in particular, it can lead to uncontrolled self proliferation which causes cancerous tumors. According to experts, after 30 seconds of being near the elephant's foot, a person will feel dizzy and tired. After two minutes, he will start bleeding and fever. After four minutes, vomiting and diarrhea will be added to them. And another, after another minute, the level of infection of the body will reach a critical point, after which irreversible processes will turn on. Death will occur in two days. Elephant's food most likely still remains the most dangerous waste on our planet. This place, according to experts, will remain radioactive for an incredibly long time, for 100,000 years, although every year the level of radiation will gradually fall. But it's still dangerous there. In 2019, a new insulating structure was urgently built over the fourth power unit in order to completely protect the external envir environment from the continued emissions of a huge number of isotopes. The new sarcophagus is designed for 100 years of operation. But let's see how radiation nowadays impacts nature and Chernobyl. You should see also my other videos. I'll put in, uh, I'll attach the URL to my playlist about Chernobyl and uh, also recollections of the Russian general who, uh, well, he was a Soviet general. He participated in the operations um, to lessen the damage in Chernobyl and also read his uh, statements about aliens. He knows what he's talking about. Anyway, let's get back to 2022, although I'm not sure if a lot of people in Eastern Europe would love to. Anyway, Western scientists visit the exclusion zone of the Chernobyl nuclear power plant from time to time. They observe the local flora and fauna. They look at how radiation impacted the natural environment. They try to understand what happened to animals and plants that survived. <clears throat> In fact, you can call it what, a nuclear war? They research, their research was recently conducted by a Spanish biologist from the University of Oviedo, Department of Biology of Organizations and Systems. And the group was led by Herman Orizaola. They found an unprecedented number of uh, tree frogs um, of an unusual black color around the nuclear power plant. These tailless amphibians, bright green by nature, literally became black in color. Frogs caught about, well, the, those who were catching frogs, they caught about 203 frogs of different shades of black in the swamps near Chernobyl. We found out the darkest frogs live near the nuclear power plant. The closer, the darker. Equally black were those frogs that lived in the places most uh, impacted during the 1986 accident, heavily contaminated with radioactive substances released by the explosion. The three frogs change their color by mutating. They learn to produce melanin, a dark pigment. The three frogs mutated, escaping from radiation. Melanin is able to protect the skin not only from ultraviolet radiation, but also from ionizing uh, radiation, that is, with radioactive contamination of the area. Having preserved and bred the most impacted areas of the Chernobyl having preserved and because they were bred in the most 
infected areas of the Chernobyl zone, those black frogs have demonstrated that their mutation is useful, does not require any additional efforts to maintain it, and increasing the chances of survival and continuing their kind. We don't know exactly what's down below at the bottom of those swamps near Chernobyl. I mean, I present as much information about impact on natural environment. You can see it in my other videos too. But I don't think we will know for quite a long time what's really going on in Chernobyl, especially with the current Russian-Ukrainian war. But I'll bring more information as, as, as I get it. I want to thank you for your attention. If you can support my research, please find the links in the description to this video. And please stay tuned uh, for more of my videos. I, I appreciate if you like my video and if you subscribe to my channel. Please tell others.